First time is roll call. Alderman Bass? Here. Alderman Cleaver? Here. Alderman Headley? Here. Alderman Stratton? Here. Alderman Totten? Here. Alderman West? Here. We have a Next item be an invocation led by Derek Steinmuller of Life Connection Church here in Grain Valley. All right, let's pray. Father, we, we just pause to thank you uh, just for today. Father, we pause just to praise uh, your holy name, uh, just to give you the worth that, that you so rightfully deserve. And so, Father, we thank you just for uh, this city. Thank you, Father, for just the work that you are doing in the city. Thank you, Father, for uh, the way that you are making your name known. And so, Father, pray for these city leaders. I ask that you would fill them just with a spirit of wisdom, give them guidance, give them direction, just through your Holy Spirit. And so, Father, pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Next time, we pledge of allegiance, led by Boy Scout Troop 322. <coughs> Next item is approval of the agenda. No changes to the agenda, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Uh, see no proclamations. Move on to citizens' participation. We ask the citizens to step forward to the podium and microphone. <laughs> and address the board. Please give your name and address for the record. Do we have anyone who wishes to address the board this evening? <laughs> See you now, move on to the consent agenda. Hey, I move it. We accept the consent agenda. I have a motion on the request to approve the consent agenda. Do I have a second? Second. Second on the cotton. Any discussion? See you now, all fair, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. See no previous business or new business. Move on to presentation. We have a presentation for communities for all ages. Mr. Mayor, members of the board, um, Kathy Boyer, uh, Teresa. Cecil? Yes. Cecil. Cecil. I've heard of her. I can imagine. Um, she is here tonight to give us a presentation on the communities of all ages. Uh, it's essentially like a, a recognition or certification that you get for for a community and it relates to how senior friendly, um, well, how friendly you are to, to all the population. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to her. And if you can hear me, I'll just stay here and kind of move through the slides. It's not like me up there. And you have a copy of this, because uh, some of the slides are going to be hard to see from your, from your seat. So Mid-America Regional Council in uh, with the KC Community of All Ages, which is the project that, that I direct, um, in, in partnership with the First Suburbs Coalition five years ago, developed an age-friendly community program that we call Communities for All Ages. And this is in recognition that cities really across the country, if not the world, are going to be experiencing far more older adults that are living longer and wanting to remain in their communities and asking the questions, are cities prepared for this? Um, typically, the cities haven't been developing with the thought that um, they're going to have more older adults that are, that are wanting to stay in their communities. So what does this mean for communities? So that's the, the genesis of this program. Um, so what I'm going to go through the first several slides is just to set up the demographic shift. Um, I can, I can get 
And you have probably heard this. When we started this program five years ago, this was new. This was a new um, statistic, but it's not so new anymore. <coughs> but in 2011, the first baby boomer turned 65. And the prediction was that in just a few short years, 10,000 boomers, and this is a U.S. statistic, would turn 65 every day. Um, initially, it was probably 8,000. We are up to the 10,000 every day. Um, that our residents across the country are turning 65, and this will continue until 2030. When we started this program, the focus was really on just a lot more, a, a huge increase of our residents would be older adults. But um, five years later, we're recognizing that millennials too will age. And this is really more of a, of a community development, economic development, because the, as the millennials age, and we have a slide in here that the similar preferences between millennials and, and boomers in terms of what they want with the built environment and the other amenities as they age are very closely aligned. So as cities begin to think about accommodating the needs and wishes of older adults, it's not just an older adult issue, it really is a lifespan issue. So this shows a, um, the a comparison of Missouri's senior population from 2010 to 2030. And I think probably the more dramatic is to look at the gold or yellow, however your eyes see that color. Um, those counties are those that will have um, a, a minimum population, or 25% or greater of their residents will be and over. Kansas is, is much more dramatic. There's just a few counties that aren't yellow. So this is, this is not as dramatic. But you can still see the shift in the colors that um, the whole state is shifting toward a, a higher percentage of older adults. And this is the KC Metro data that shows Jackson County. You see that all nine counties in the, in the Mark Metro area that there's a, an increase. Johnson County, Kansas has the greatest percentage increase, anticipated um, increase. But Jackson, you can see, is still a higher percentage. And we're seeing that the metropolitan Kansas City population is becoming more and more a region of all ages, where all groups are representative relatively equally. And so here's what we typically see, the kind of this, the, um, the snake or the rat or whatever, the rat and the snake, the pig and the python, I think that's what it is, 1990, where the middle is showing the greater um, percentage of the residents. And this is 2030, it's much more of a stovepipe that, show, that are showing that we really are becoming our uh, residents, um, cities, counties, and, and the country of all ages equally distributed. So here's Green Valley, and again, you have this in your packet if you can't see this. But the green is the projection, um, and you can see that with the exception of some of the younger ages, that the projection is an increase of all of the ages, ages from, um, from if I put my glasses on, 40, is that right, 40 on, on up. One of my advisory board members says that the, the census didn't even keep track of those 85 plus earlier in the century. So it's um, interesting that they didn't do that. So again, as I mentioned earlier, the question is what does this mean for cities? To have more older adults that are healthy, they want to stay in their communities, they want to stay in their homes, if at all possible. Um, by far, whatever survey that is conducted, um, by far the majority of people say that they want to stay in their own home or if they do need to move because the, they no longer can reside safely in their home, they want to move into intergenerational neighborhoods in homes much like what they grew up in. Now, for sure, there are those that want to go to age-segregated communities or those that need a higher level of, of health services, so assisted living or what have you, but by far the majority want to stay in their own home or in multi-generational neighborhoods. So one of the questions is, is this how cities are looking at their development in terms of housing? So what does this mean for cities? It really impacts every area. Um, if, assuming Great Valley um, chooses to participate in the program, one of the activities that we do during the, this first stage, uh, the first phase, which is the Bronx level, is to um, have a meeting with the department heads to really look at how an increased older adult population will specifically impact their departments. 
but it, it essentially does impact all areas of city planning and city operations. So there are a couple myths that, that we wanted to just highlight and that boomers don't plan to age like their parents. And well, the myth is that people over 65 years old want a quiet lifestyle. But the fact is boomers don't want to plan to live like their, like their own parents. They want to remain active, engaged. As mentioned, they, they have a strong desire in many, many surveys of all different origins um, as a result that older adults want to stay in, in their, their homes and neighborhoods. An emerging need for transportation options, and many want to continue to work or remain active as volunteers or in some capacity to be an asset to the community. And the second is that young people look for different community amenities than older adults. And as we go through this program, we'll be able to share research and other kinds of publications that show the, the direct um, comparison of the preferences between the millennials and, and those that are boomers. Mixed use development, greater transportation options, and I know that for cities like um, Great Valley, transportation options are somewhat limited. But Sarah just mentioned at a meeting this week that OATS is going to be um, providing some, some additional transportation. Um, but walkable neighborhoods always are very high up on, on the list of preferences. I guess the final myth is that planning for one age group means that it's not meeting the interests of the other, or that you're having to choose where to put your investments, the young or the old. But the fact is accounting for the needs and interests of all age groups and abilities will create communities for all ages. Um, we're cities that are great to grow up and to grow old. So the program that was developed in partnership with the First Suburbs Coalition five years ago the, the program was piloted actually in first suburbs communities, and then it's, it since has been expanded throughout the region. There are three phases to the <coughs> program <coughs> awareness, which is the initial one, um, and I think that we go through that a little bit more detail. And then there's the self-assessment in your packet, which we won't take the time out now, but there's a checklist. The, the silver level or the, uh, the middle level um, there's a group that will be identified within your community to help participate in that. And you go through the entire checklist that's in there and just get the self-assessment. We have this policy, we don't, we do an action um, or something similar or we don't. And then a report um, is, is um, submitted at the end of that. And then the implementation, and right now we have seven communities in the region that have reached the gold level, and that's simply applying an age lens to a major city plan. And that's whatever city plan that your community feels um, is, is appropriate. So the checklist includes these topics, and there are several age-friendly community program models throughout the country. And no matter what the model is, it includes these topics. Some have more topics, some have less. But these are the ones that the Kansas City re region looks at, particularly in that middle phase. <coughs> so the communities that are participating, and this is a, as of April 2019, and this just gives you a, an overview of those communities that are participating. You'll notice that Missouri is Missouri is far ahead of the Kansas of the Kansas side. So the Bronx level requires a resolution of the city council or the board of aldermen um, basically to say we're participating. We agree that this is an important program and we're going to, partici we're going to participate. Um, because this is characterized by awareness, um, there's a variety of presentations that are made to groups that, that you all determine to be the most important to get this information in front of um, so that they're involved and they own this, this, um, the work. This is going to be a part of their community. Um, we do do a presentation to department heads and to commissions, relevant commissions. Might be the park board or the planning commission. Um, it's really up to each city which which group that um, to have a, a presentation. Um, some some of our newer communities have issued a resident survey, an online resident survey, uh, or um, they also make it available as a hard copy. The results of that tend to inform the silver level as you're doing the self-assessment. Um, and our newer communities have opted to do that. 
So it's, it's just a series of, of activities that help build the awareness of the elected body, staff, and residents of what this means. And it's also an opportunity to ask residents what, would, what, are, the, um, the, what are the qualities of the city that you would see as important if you're wanting to age in place and be a vital member of the community of Green Valley. So all of the cities that participate in that's kind of a guiding principle question um, looking at this along the lifespan to be a resident of Green Valley. The silver level is mentioned is essentially doing a self-assessment of the checklist. And then the gold level is applying an age lens to a major city plan. And I'm just going to go back to this one. Um, so the gold level, just as examples, um, Gladstone and Carney and Gladstone and Carney applied it to their updated comp plan. Roland Park and Mission applied the age lens to their updated park plan. Raymore and Lee Summit developed their own unique Communities for All Ages master plan. And Independence applied it to their updated comp plan and strategic plan. So those are just examples. Um, North Kansas City is in the process, and they're applying it to their updated master bicycle plan. Because for their community, the bike plan is really, um, really important. So for next steps, uh, the first is the Board of Aldermen presentation <coughs> and hope for resolution to identify the leadership, and that's usually at the staff level to help champion this through. Um, to develop a plan, your, your Bronx level plan, um, with mark assistance if you choose, um, those are required. Um, there's a couple optional. We have joint meetings every month of all of the representatives from the other recognition cities. Um, Sarah's been attending those recently. Um, so it's a way for groups, for those folks to come together and to share what's working, what's not working. Um, and it's been very helpful. We <coughs> continue to request that we hold those meetings. And then we have a professional <laughs> network for communities for all ages that is open to the entire community, the, the entire metro area, rather. And we bring in national experts on topics that are, that are relevant to age-friendly communities. So this, this is any questions? Or I could go back to any slides that I might not spend as much time on. Okay, our oath does now. I don't know how the connection is, but it only goes to Blue Springs and Grand Valley. A lot of people go to the doctor someplace else. That's the biggest complaint at first. It's, it's the biggest concern that's elevated, even in some of the, in actually every community so far. So as a part of the self-assessment phase, transportation is one of those checklist items. There are no silver bullets for this, but sometimes through the conversation that emerges through the self-assessment, there may be a solution, a partial solution that might not have been considered before. And we have some examples from a couple of cities that have developed task forces to look at those. But you're fortunate to have those, even though it's limited. I know. I have a couple of questions. I guess besides the staff costs, is there cost to be part of this organization uh, yeah. other than the participation of the city and then as you've seen cities participate in this and put the, the as you said the age lens on different pieces of their organization and, and how they do business have you seen them make significant changes in like say the comp plan and those sorts of things yeah, it's, it's amazing, and it's a part of what we do, too. I try to bring in representatives from other communities, certainly with the staff um, department head training, um, so that learning from a peer, what's, what's been done. Raymore is fairly close to you. They've, they've adopted, um, for, for them, because as you know, every community is different, everything's local, but for them, they really look at their accessory dwelling unit in recognition that more folks are going to want to stay in their communities <laughs> and that for some folks, millennials are moving home or that intergenerational families. So they expanded their ADU ordinance from one residential zoning area to all of them. Um, they're also looking at a universal design ordinance that 
um, that they've not had before, and they're about they're in the research phase and are going to be presenting a recommendation to the city council um, this year. Some cities, um, I think, a lot of the examples would just be behavioral and it's, it's cultural. Um, some will say that it's just the way they do business now. Two of the cities at the bottom of every agenda item um, where it's relevant, there's a communities for all ages impact statement. So the staff who's the most aligned with that agenda item are required to, to have a one or two sentence on what is the impact of this item that you all are going to be considering that impacts communities for all ages. Another city manager is out of the checklist is asking all of her department heads to choose an item and then that's a part of their performance appraisal for the next year. Um, but I would say most with the, with the complex, it becomes policy. At HLAN, it's, it's policy. It's the way the city does its business. It's a short answer, but depending on your perspective, it's either short or long answer. Thank you. Thank you. See no additional public or presentations or public hearings. We'll move on to ordinances. And uh, we had discussed this a long a little while back, but y'all notice we have a fluid piece of paper you should have. There we have one right. Oh, they're all put up there. Okay. Okay, so uh, starting tonight, you notice we do not have sponsors on the ordinances. That was always kind of, we talked about that. You may not be in agreement with what you were sponsoring. So uh, from here on out, somebody will have to make the motion, which will be the first reading part that I moved that we make the first reading by time only, so forth, before we can even discuss at that point, right? Correct me if I'm wrong here. On track, you're doing and well. And then first, second, so that. Mayor, the kind of, again, the, the reason that we were making some changes were that in order to bring an item before the governing body, there has to be a motion and, and a second on that. And so we were trying to, you know, before we were kind of having a first reading before we really even had the, you know, essentially the input of the, the Board of Aldermen to bring the item forward. So we're kind of changing the order a little bit here to kind of bring the item forward for discussion and then doing the first reading once you've had your initial discussion. Yeah. Will you then after, you'll read it then after the initial discussion? Yeah, so it essentially... Right. No one will actually read it until someone makes a motion. Right, so essentially what would happen uh, going forward, uh, just from a procedural standpoint, is we would get to this portion of the agenda, and then, Mayor, you would announce uh, the next item on the agenda would be uh, consideration uh, of uh, item, uh, in this case, 13A, um, and then uh, you'd, you would, at that point, uh, suggest, you know, would, I would entertain a motion for, for the first reading uh, of this ordinance, and then we would get into the, that, that's the, right. the jumping in Hold part. Did you interrupt me if we've got to add something? I'll, I'll, I will help out wherever I can. All right, so on ordinances, first item is item 13A. Up for consideration, do I have a motion and a second to bring this forward? That's on uh, I, move, I move we make the first reading by title only for Bill 19-14. I have a motion by Alderman Headley. Do I have a second? A second. Second Alderman Stratton. Now, discussion or do you want to read the title? So at this point, you would go ahead and have the discussion so that you know what the item is about, okay. uh, and then you would then you would have a vote on whether you want to have that first reading. All right. So uh, it is now up for discussion. It's being ordinance appointing Jamie Logan the city clerk. So we don't want to discuss this. <laughs> Mr. Right. Mr. Mayor, members of the board, this is just a uh, ordinance ratifying the action that uh, we took after the uh, interviews on April 15th. Uh, for a new city clerk. As, as you all know, uh, Jamie Logan was the candidate that was uh, selected and she started uh, this week on May 6th. This is on for two reads tonight, just simply for that reason. Okay. So as a procedural note then, uh, once we would have the, uh, the vote on the first reading, whoever would make that, uh, that second uh, Motion. It's a motion to accept the first reading once we've had it, and then instead of saying uh, 
uh, by title only at our next regular session, you just say by title only. Okay. So in the discussion then? And this vote would be to bring it back, reading. right? Yep. This, yeah. For, this, this one is actually for the first reading. That, the, that was the motion and the second was a first reading. You had the discussion and now it would be time to call for the vote. Okay. Do you have any additional discussion? This is a those, this roll call vote. This can be a voice vote. This, okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right. So at this point, then um, uh, there would be uh, a motion from someone on the on the board to to uh, to move that we would accept the first reading and bring it back for a second. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't read the title. I, <laughs> It's my part. That's Sorry about that. First reading, Mayor. <laughs> this is an ordinance appointing Jamie Logan as a city clerk of the city of Grain Valley, Missouri. Okay. Do I have a motion? Mayor, I move we accept the first reading of Bill B-19-14 and bring it back for a second reading by title only okay. at, at our next regular nope, session. Nope. It will be tonight. Okay. In a second. Okay. I have a motion by Alderman Headley. I have a second. Second. Second, Alderman Stratton. Okay. Any discussion? And then this one will be roll call, right? This is again for the second reading, so I'll read it. Uh, go ahead and take the vote. It can be a voice vote in this circumstance. I will actually read it this time uh, instead of making that mistake. All right. And then so, same the discussion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Also, the same sign. Back to you. Okay. So the. the uh, that one passed. Yes, I'm sorry. So that was that was a move to accept the first reading, and that, and now we're going to bring now we're going to make a motion to bring to make the second reading. Yes. So is there someone who would like to move to make the second reading? Mm -hmm. I move that we make the second reading by title only of Bill Number B, 19-14. All right. I have a motion. Alderman Cleaver. I have a second. 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 Alderman Headley. Any discussion? All right. Now it's going to be voice All vote. Favor, me. Still a voice vote. Don't you have to read the title? I w yes, but there wasn't a vote on that, was it? There, so Just to bring it to the board. Gotcha. Really, we kind of, I'm used <laughs> to you know. guys normally doing something on one night and then coming back at another night, if that makes sense. So the second part of the, of the second, it was kind of redundant. So, But we have a motion and a vote, a motion and a second at this point for the second reading. I just need a voice vote. All right. All three can say aye. Uh, also, the same sign. All right, now back to you. Ordinance appointing Jamie Logan as city clerk of the city of Grain Valley, Missouri. Second. Okay. Do I have a motion? Mayor, I move we accept the second reading of Bill 19 14, making it ordinance number um, 2467. 2467. All right. I have a motion to Alderman Headley to approve Bill B-19-14, make an ordinance 2467. I have a second. Okay. Second Alderman Stratton. This will be a roll call vote, man. Discussion. All right. We're going to roll call vote. Say your name. Say yes or no. Alderman Stratton. Yes. Alderman Cotton. Yes. Alderman Bass. Yes. Alderman Headley. Yes. Alderman West. Yes. Alderman Cleaver. Yes. All right. Six zero. Motion passes, man. That's a lot of motions. <laughs> Did you get all those? No, my nephew. <laughs> <laughs> I won't figure it out. All right. It will get easier. I promise. Do this again. Yeah. Well, somebody hasn't put all those. Hey. Yeah. All right. Let's try this again. Yeah. Yeah. So now we have item 13B up for consideration. Do I have a motion to consider? Mayor, I move that we make the first reading by title only for Bill 19-15. All right, I have a motion from Alderman Headley to consider. Do I have a second? Second. Second Alderman back. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor, members of the board, uh, again, this uh, ordinance will be on <coughs> two reads, which I know is unusual and uh, not the, the board's favorite way to approve things, but this, is, too, is an employment issue. And uh, this uh, ordinance is to uh, officially uh, ratify the appointments that you made of uh, Susan Watkins to the municipal court. Uh, the board went through uh, the, the 
process of watching her as an interim municipal judge when she was appointed back in February uh, of this year. And then we later negotiated a salary and compensation uh, package upon her permanent appointment. So according to our, our city code, uh, at that point we need to come back and actually set the, the compensation and uh, as well as, as her appointment and her term uh, by ordinance. And just one note about that, she will be serving a four-year term, uh, and at that time we will uh, select, uh, reappoint her or select another municipal judge. That's all for me, Mr. Mayor. Yep. Is the salary the same all four years? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. So, is, yeah. Since since it is set by ordinance, uh, you would have to adopt uh, an additional or, or uh, reset her her term. So, considering she's in for a four-year term, the next time for compensation evaluation would be upon reappointment. Any additional discussion? Seeing none. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Mayor, this is an ordinance ratifying the appointment of Susan Watkins as Judge, Grain Valley, Missouri Municipal Division, Circuit Court of Jackson County, Missouri, and setting the pay therefore. Mayor, I move we accept the first reading of Bill B-19-15 and bring it back for its second reading by title only. I got a motion on the head for Bill B-19-15 for its first reading, bring it back by title only for its second reading. Do I have a second? Second. Second on the bath. Any discussion? Right. Seeing none, all for say aye. 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 All for the same sign. Right. I'm going to back up for consideration again. Right. And now it will be a, a motion for the second reading. Okay. I'll entertain a motion for the second read of, of item 13B, B19-15. I move we make the second reading by title only of bill number B, 19-15. Okay, I got a motion from Alderman Seaver. Do I have a second? Second. Second, Alderman Stratton. Any discussion? Right. Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Mayor, this is an ordinance ratifying the appointment of Susan Watkins as Judge, Grain Valley, Missouri, Municipal Division, Circuit Court of Jackson County, Missouri, and setting the pay therefore. Ordinance number will be 2468. I move that we accept the second reading of bill number B19-15, making it ordinance number 2468. I have a motion to Stratton to approve bill B19-15 for its second reading, making it ordinance 2468. Do I have a second? Second. All right. Any discussion? All right. This will be a roll call. Unless you want to vote for us all. Okay. Alderman Cleaver? Yes. Okay. Alderman West? Yes. Alderman Headley? Yes. Alderman Bass? Yes. Alderman Totten? Yes. Alderman Stratton? Yes. All right. Six zero. The motion of the ordinance is approved, Mayor. Okay. Okay. Now we're on uh, resolutions, and we don't have to do all that stuff on these. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We're just doing this the way we've always done it. Okay. <laughs> So in this case, Mayor, the uh, the next item would be uh, item number uh, 14A. So should I read those in or you want to read those? You can go ahead and read those. Okay. Just rolling through the, the agenda at this point. All right. So the next item of consideration is item 14A, the resolution by the Board of Aldermen of the City of Grand Valley, Missouri, acknowledging, supporting, and promoting the KC Communities for All Ages and Mid-America Regional Council's Communities for All Ages Initiative. I have a motion to approve. I move that we approve resolution R19-25. I have a motion from Alderman Tedley. Do I have a second? Second. Second, Alderman Cleaver. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor, members of the board, this is directly related to the presentation that you heard <coughs> earlier. Mrs. Ozenbach and answer any questions that you may have. Who, who all is involved in this going forward? 
Um, so Sarah is actually taking the lead on this project. She's been attending the meetings for quite a while mm -hmm. and has kind of started working on um, getting things together to have the department head meeting that she mentioned in that. What levels, what, what's the higher level, level than gold? <laughs> Diamond? We'll find out. Diamond, can we I find out? Platinum. <laughs> Plat oh, platinum. Oh, yeah. Platinum, yeah. Good idea. We'll make it happen. All right, any discussion? All right. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. All right. All right. Next will be item 14B, resolution R19-26. It's a resolution by the Board of Aldermen of the City of Grand Valley, Missouri, authorizing the City Administrator to enter into an agreement with Jackson County, Missouri, for distribution of combat, combat funds of $87,204 for the 2019 fiscal year. Do I have a <coughs> motion to approve? I move that we approve resolution number R19-26. Okay, I have a motion from Alderman Bass. Do I have a second? Second. Alderman Hedley. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor, members of the board, this is uh, just the annual resolution that we've passed to accept the combat funds that are offered through the Jackson County uh, Sales Tax Chief uh, Bill. Can I answer any specific questions related uh, to this? I can't tell you that it, 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 we did see an additional increase this year. Have any questions? Hey, Chief, is this designated to be used for specific items? Yeah, it it comes along programs in the cities to all about the And partially SRO salaries, uh, part of our SRO salaries are covered by that as well. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. All right. 6-0. Uh, next item is item 14C, which is resolution R19-27. It would be a resolution by the Board of Aldermen of the City of Grand Valley, Missouri, approving a three-year cooperative agreement between the City and the Grand Valley Partnership. Uh, do I have a motion to approve? Mayor, I move we approve resolution R19-27. I have a motion from Alderman Headley. Do I have a second? Okay. Alderman Stratton. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor, members of the board, uh, as the partnership, the Green Valley Partnership uh, enters into its fourth year uh, of, of as being an economic development corporation, uh, this is the first renewal of the contract that we had for the EDC. So when we uh, initially uh, staffed the Grain Valley Economic Development Corporation. We offered them a three-year uh, agreement at the level of $35,000 per year. So that was the commitment from the, the public sector. Uh, and as well, we were able to get a, a three-year commitment from CJC and the school district. Uh, that, that expired uh, last year. And so moving forward after the, the Grain Valley Partnership um, was formed from the Chamber of Commerce and the EDC combining. Uh, we needed to draft a new uh, cooperative agreement between them. And uh, you will see that the costs that we're offering, we, we've cut it from 35000 down to $25,000. Uh, part, part of that is because uh, I am now handling uh, uh, re or, uh, recruitment of new businesses coming within the community. Uh, and the partnership is handling uh, business retention. They're, they're kind of really taking care of the inside of, of the city limits. Uh, so anyway, again, this is just a resolution to approve the, the cooperative agreement um, so we can make the payment to that organization. Any questions or discussion? If, if we're considering this to be 
an independent contractor, is that correct? That's what it states in here? Yes. So will we be sending them a 1099 miscellaneous at the end of the year? Um, that, Kathy? I believe because they're a nonprofit, not incorporated, they don't get Yeah, I, as, when I served as the treasurer, I know that we didn't report the income from, uh, I, I shouldn't say that, I didn't prepare the taxes, but uh, when the accountant prepared that, I know that we didn't, uh, we didn't have any documentation from the school district, CJC, or uh, the city in the form of a 1099. And I don't know if that's because it's because it is a 501c3. I'm not familiar enough with the, the tax code. You probably know a thing or two about that. Well, that's why I asked the question. <laughs> Well, we can. We, should we look into that? Yeah, absolutely. Sure that yeah. We are in I'll, compliance. I'll certainly, yeah. I'll certainly check into it. I have a staff meeting with partnership staff tomorrow. In fact, is it, I have another question. Mm -hmm. if the payment now is set at twenty-five thousand, at least for this year, yes, twenty nineteen. Yes, ma'am. Is there a limit? No. There is no limit to that number. No, so the, at the board's discretion, the board could increase that if they if they desired, but we wanted to set the minimum just to be able to structure a baseline uh, budget to keep the organization, you know, as we're going through the budget to keep the organization solvent. So 25000 is the minimum. Mm -hmm. But we'd have to prove any additional. Yes, yeah. You, so if there was any additional compensation given to the partnership, it would have to be at the, the board would have to approve it. Which board? Grain Valley, oh, oh, Board of Aldermen, this, this board right here. So if, say, they, you know, uh, came to the partnership or came to the city of Green Valley and said, we need $15,000 for an additional project, um, that would have to, it's, it's unallocated funding that we, we didn't budget for. So it would have to come to the board not only as an additional request, but a budget amendment as well. Do I get a third question? Yeah, you get 20 questions. <laughs> 20 of them, Okay, on the first page, there's a sentence here that says, through daily communication with existing businesses, the partnership will monitor trends and conditions, provide guidance, and adjust needed services to maintain and expand Grand Valley business space. Yes, Who in the world is going to do that? That's Tasha's job. That's part of the business retention and expansion program that she's working through. And she's going to contact all the businesses? The idea is select number of businesses. Yeah, the idea is that, that we'll set, um, and it's similar to how, how it was when the, with the EDC, we'll set a target amount of uh, brie visits that she needs to do per week. And as, as part of that, she's actually she's doing either, either the synchronous uh, survey forms or the blue ocean, I believe it is, survey forms. But basically creating a, a database uh, uh, of businesses within Grain Valley and going around uh, to see if they have any problems, issues. Uh, that sort of thing. And how is that information going to be communicated to this board? Uh, it'll, well, uh, Mayor Todd sits on the board, although he's not able to attend during during the uh, school year. Um, and we've actually had some discussions about Mayor uh, assigning a proxy. Uh, I know that Alderman Cleaver had indicated an interest. I know, Yolanda, you've served on it in the past. So that, that's a discussion uh, that we can have in, in the future. But one of the obligations of the, of the partnership under this new contract is to give an annual report to the, to the Board of Aldermen uh, uh, on or before October 1st. So monthly updates um, I would be able to provide. Uh, and then, the, of course, the, they're required to give an annual report. No, 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 no. Oh, come on. Right. Okay, so you'll figure out about the 1099. If we need to do that, we will do that, right? Absolutely. All right. 
Do we have any additional questions on that? Just clarification, Ryan. You said October, and here it says April. I'm sorry, where does it say April, Bob? I Are all them in headlink? Huh? Item number eight. Mid paragraph. Paragraph eight with, on page two? Yes. Okay. Partnership will also submit an annual report to the city prior to the partner's annual meeting commencement, commencing in April of each calendar year. Uh, very good catch, Alderman Headley. I did not realize that that was there. Uh, I can tell you that the partnership's uh, fiscal year runs from uh, April 1st to uh, March 31st, I believe it is. Uh, and so I would ask this board right here, what would you prefer? Would you prefer an October? October 1st report date or an April uh, or uh, more likely an, a March annual report uh, and based off of what you want I will change the wording to make sure that it's consistent through throughout this document what what makes more sense relative to uh, I think the annual reports important for for the uh, the city the city just simply in in October because that's when we're but finalizing yeah. budget and uh, if there were any issues, if you know we got an unsatisfactory annual report, uh, then we would we would take that into consideration. Now, I understand that this organization was built to withstand uh, acute political uprisings or turnover, uh, you know, from the city of Green Valley. Uh, if somebody has you know an agenda, I mean, the, the business community sees the the value in this, and so uh, the. The, the agreement to terminate uh, is, is required to be given written notice uh, of six months, 180 days, simply because there's times that expenditures are heavy at the beginning of the year, maybe in summer. Uh, the golf tournament's a great example. You know, they spend a tremendous amount of money for the, the golf tournament. Um, for us to have a 30 or 60 day termination date is not good for that, that organization, and that organization is really um, uh, more like a sibling to the city of Green Valley rather than just a partner. So um, I think October 1st is, is a good time for the annual update, uh, but we would have to give uh, 180 days notice per the agreement. Uh, now, the, the, there, there is no um, agreement that can indebt any future board, so, you know, based off of the Missouri non uh, the non-appropriation clause, uh, essentially, if you didn't allocate the funding, then they're not entitled to it. So mm -hmm. it's it's really more about having, you know, it's form over substance on to that point. That makes sense? Yeah, I just, I mean, whatever makes sense. I wasn't challenging it. I was just questioning what, what makes sense from the, yeah. the I think in, of the budget and everything else. So. Yeah, I think in October one date, or if the board would even like to see a September date. That way, it gets us earlier in the budget cycle. Uh, October 1st was just uh, the the date that we had, had done in the past, which, um, mind you, the the EDC failed to hit that deadline the first three years of uh, their existence. So I'm going to be serving as as the president of the organization. I'm going to be uh, bird dog in that to make sure that you guys have the information. Uh, to comfortably allocate additional funding in the future. So you want October first with it then? As long as it's good with the board, yes, sir. Any objections, to October? So no, earlier, like in September, mm -hmm. would that give more time for if there is any discussion of budget items or anything like that? Would that give more time to figure something out before the October first deadline, or would that make a difference? Well, they just have to report to the board by October 1st. So, um, and then at that point, if if the board wasn't satisfied with the progress that they've made, uh, we would then go ahead and uh, notify them per the 180-day uh, clause. And worst case scenario, we would be on the on the hook for uh, one the first quarter of the following year because that's when the the determination would, ex would expire the the contract. Okay. 
Thursday of October 1st. Very good. I'll make right. that change. Thank you for mentioning that, Alderman Headley. Any other discussion or questions? Okay. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Item will be item 14B, resolution R19 28. A resolution by the Board of Aldermen of the City of Grand Valley, Missouri, adopting the City of Grand Valley, Missouri Economic Development Incentives Policies and Procedures. Uh, do I have a motion to approve? I move that we approve resolution number R19 28. I have a motion from Alderman Cleaver. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Alderman Headley. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor, members of the board, as you will recall, we went through the three uh, workshops to uh, come up with a more succinct version of, of our former economic development guideline. The, the former document was 158 pages long and said nothing more than uh, it was just a recitation of state statute. So uh, Joe came and, and gave uh, a series of uh, training and workshop to the to the board. We worked through it. We picked some. Uh, some measurable uh, areas that uh, incentives could be qualified for. So this covers uh, section, uh, Chapter 99 of state statute, which is TIF, and then section, uh, section 60 or Chapter 67, which is CID and NED, Transportation Development Districts, which is Chapter 238, Urban Redevelopment Incentives, which is Chapter 353, and then Sales Tax Reimbursement Agreements and Incentives, which is Chapter 70. Um, there is uh, still more work that we have to do on economic development. Most uh, importantly in my mind is identify a target industry that, that we want to focus on. Um, right now we, we have more of a, uh, an approach that we look for uh, the inventory in Grain Valley and we pursue those projects. Uh, but I, I think that uh, developing a target industry would be uh, a, a natural next, next step and then um, uh, at, at that point we can um, go in here and, and also update chapter 100 does have a, a future, a section reserved for the future for when we decide what levels of abatement that we would want to offer for any chapter 100 project, which is when, um, just to refresh your recollection, that's, that's when the city actually uh, owns a, a site or a piece of personal property for a business, and because of the city's ownership, um, it's, the property is exempt from any real estate uh, and property taxes and sales tax, uh, and rather than uh, collecting that tax to all the jurisdictions, the developer or the owner makes payments uh, in lieu of taxes, pilots, uh, so rather they, they use their, their, real, their uh, real estate and personal property taxes to make the debt service payments on it. So uh, a, a future workshop is going to be to determine how much do we want to offer in Chapter 100, but we, we need to know what that target industry is before we do that. You know, if it's an animal health corridor uh, focus, which, uh, you know, makes a lot of sense considering, you know, I've been telling everybody in, in the tri-state region that Grain Valley is the home of animal, the animal health corridor. Uh, then we can then narrow down, okay, if we would offer Chapter 100, what is the offering that, that the board would be willing to do? This helps me a tremendous amount when I go out and, and try to recruit businesses uh, because one of the first questions is always what, what are the incentives that you're offering? So this document that you, that you set, you know, you set through the, the workshops and the document that came out of that is very help, helpful at the direction uh, that, that I can take with uh, recruitment lets me recruit more aggressively. Um, with that, I will. Uh, uh, our, our city attorney Joe Lauber is actually the author of this document, so I will conclude my summary. And uh, if you have any questions, we can direct them towards Joe because he knows more about this than I ever will. Anyone have any questions? We're supposed to be pet friendly. Pet friendly? No. We're within the Animal Health Corridor, which is a, it's a corridor that exists between Columbia, Missouri and uh, Manhattan, Kansas, along I-70, <coughs> where a vast majority of the nation's research and development and uh, manufacturing uh, distribution for animal health companies exists. 
Uh, so yeah, yeah. If you have, uh, you know, wh whether it be pharmaceuticals for for animals or uh, research and development, uh, experimental testing, uh, there's just for and nobody can put their finger on it other than Snybar Farm was the birthplace of it. Uh, but this, if there is a tremendous amount, up to I think the number is 80 percent of the animal health research and manufacturing occurs along that corridor. Okay. Anything else? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Okay. Six zero. Next item is item 14E, resolution R19-29. This is a resolution by the Board of Aldermen of the City of Green Valley, Missouri, authorizing the city administrator enter into an agreement with Intercom Kansas City for Media Services. So I have a motion to approve. So moved. Alderman West. I have a second. Second. Alderman Headley. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor, members of the board, I have a. <laughs> right here. Maybe it's just asleep. I think when the lid got closed all the way, it actually shut it down. Ah, you're there. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to go over this with you simply to explain to you what we're going to be getting this year through uh, this project. I need to call a recess out there, Ryan? No, sir, Mr. <laughs> Mayor. I, I've got... Uh, I don't All right, the last couple times we've tried this. That's <laughs> just a matter of uh, time. That's the regular projection. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa, did you just pull this up from the internet? Yes.
events, including Trail or Treat, National Night Out, and Holiday Fest, although National Night Out's in quarter three this year. Are we doing it in August or October? Oh, yeah. It's in August this year, so we'll have that switch um, to a, a third quarter. Uh, total investment, zero right there. You'll find out why it says that here in just a little bit. And then we also set a backup date in the, in the case of inclement weather, uh, except for breaking news events. The broadcast will move to the Green Valley Price Chopper location. So this year we have a contingency plan for bad weather. Uh, the other piece of it is that we did uh, Royals baseball. So uh, we got out of out of this campaign, we get a, a 162 regular season games. So we get 162 30 second. Uh, drive time uh, pregame show ads, uh, which says they're obviously commercial air with drive time from six six thirty. Uh, that's that's one of that's one of their peak listener times. So that's when you're you're going to hear. Uh, I don't know if you've heard the one that I sound like a used car salesman, you know, advocating for Green Valley schools. <laughs> and, um, I don't know, Justin. I don't you've know. Heard what about Justin? You're <laughs> insulting our one of our business owners back there, Justin Tyson. <laughs> 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 and I wouldn't mind you. Don't sound like me. get uh, during the actual live broadcast here they do X number of like bring in businesses or people from the community to talk yeah. live on air.
question? Do we have any um, you know, reports or anything that show how well? I've heard them on the radio before over the years, you know, the spots and the advertising and carrying values over for business, basically. Do we have any report back on how well it did? Did it track business? Did it not? Did it, is there any type of... Uh, it, yeah, I can't. I can't say that you know the the new Quick Trip that's going in, or Taco Bell, or you know any of those businesses are related to it. But I can tell you um, that I've heard from more than one business owner, and mayors heard this, a similar sentiment: is that uh, the local Green Valley businesses felt like that was the uh, best effort that we have made to to uh, advocate for Green Valley, because it's not just come to Green Valley and grow. It's come to Green Valley, uh, shop here, be a part of our community. And uh, I didn't, I, I, I heard zero complaints about the initiative. Now I'm sure that, um, I'm sure that we can extract uh, data from that if we ask KMBC to, re you know, provide reports. Uh, but historically I haven't done that. Happy to do it though. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, it's like any type of ad advertising, you know, it, 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 advertising, it's just so hard to gauge if you got your money's worth, you know, because it's, it's, uh, Is the purpose of it to bring new business or to bring people into the businesses that are in Green Valley already or both? Both. Okay. Yeah. So the, the idea is to advocate for Green Valley, let people know that we're open for business, that we have Class A schools, and that uh, we have uh, opportunity uh, for business owners that if, if they want to come in. I mean, we try to hit all aspects of, of what Green Valley has to offer. Well, she's just for an example. I mean, a couple of years ago when we didn't get the brand out, you know, we had a decent crowd here for the shows. And uh, I remember, you know, Parks commenting on the air, you know, hey, you know, what's, the town's really blowing up. What's going on here? Or we're talking to him, you know. This used to be a place where you stopped for, a, you know, some chew and a drink on your way to St. Louis or Columbia and, and now look at it. And, you know, a lot of businesses afterwards come to me and said, hey, this is, you know, the best thing you guys have done for us. And, you know, I also, you know, I look at it this way. Uh, you know, I mean, Temp Stop may be open before, you know, the fair this year when Dana and Parks and them are here. People are going to be coming to listen to those shows in person. And that's, you know, it's just one business, but that would be great, you know, for them. They're going to be driving right by this brand new, you know, store to to come to the fair. So I think that's, you know, good for them. And mm -hmm. the businesses would get on there and allow us to talk, you know. I think it's, you know, it's good for them. Ironically, I, I literally, and you guys will be hearing about this a little bit later tonight, uh, a CEO of a huge uh, institution in, in, in the United States uh, that I met with last week said that um, one of the things that, one of the things that I, I won't say attracted him, but made Green Valley stand out in his mind was our aggressive approach to marketing for you know Green Valley businesses. We you know advocate for the schools, and it it shows a tremendous amount of cooperation within the community and uh, the business environment. So. Any other questions? Right. See none. In all favor, please say aye. Aye. All for the same sign. All right. Next up then is the attorney's reports. Mayor, two quick, quiet, two quick items for you this evening. Uh, first of all, uh, for anybody who uh, still wanted an opportunity to do our city officials training conference uh, seminar that we put on, uh, we do have our last one of the year uh, this coming uh, Friday. It is up in Platte City, uh, but those are that's still open uh, for uh, registration if anybody wanted to do that. I uh, need to get it done tomorrow. Uh, the second item I have for you is just a reminder that uh, at the end of this week, the uh, Missouri legislative session will be uh, uh, ending. And so uh, we hope to uh, have a, uh, a summary of the legislation out sometime soon after that. And uh, it's always a very busy week. So if you are aware, if, like Missouri Municipal League lets you know uh, to reach out to any of our legislators, 
many things get changed on the floor uh, at the last minute. Things kind of they they call them kind of Christmas tree statutes sometimes, and they will they will add a bunch of ornaments to that that you know sometimes are good and sometimes are not really good. So. Uh, just be aware, uh, if, if you can, please, this week uh, to anything that, that MML needs from a response uh, so that we can reach out with our legislators, legislators and make sure that, uh, you know, we're, we're getting the best legislation uh, coming forward uh, out of uh, Jefferson City uh, as they wrap up this week. Thank you, ma'am. Next up then is the Administrator and Staff Report. Uh, Mr. Mayor, we will start with uh, our finance directors. First, uh, Ms. Bowden. Uh, we'll go, and then uh, Mr. Uh, Craig has uh, a report on 2000, the series 2000 bonds, 2012 bonds. I just wanted to let you all know, um, most of you know I'm retiring at the end of this month, and this will be my last board meeting. I just want to say that I've appreciated working with the mayor and all the aldermen, and it's been a pleasure working with the city, and I've learned a lot and met a lot of great people. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. uh, good evening. Um, I just wanted to congratulate Kathy on a tremendous career. Um, she's been a great asset to the city, and I've uh, thoroughly enjoyed working with her over the last week. Um, as City Administrator Hunt mentioned, Kathy and I did have a conference call with the city's financial advisor from Springstead, the bond council from Gilmore and Bell, and the underwriter from Piper Jeffrey regarding the potential refunding on the 2012 tax increment uh, revenue bonds. Piper Jeffrey is working on the preliminary financial numbers and also is having discussions with uh, potential investors. The uh, biggest item with this is that it will take the city's annual appropriation for the um, revenue bonds out of the, uh, or the, that annual obligation out of the refinancing. We should have uh, that issue brought back for the board's consideration in July. Um, the only other issue, I, only other item I had was I just wanted to uh, thank the mayor and the board of aldermen for the uh, wonderful opportunity to serve here in this great community. And I think the only person more excited than myself is my oldest daughter Vivian, who thinks all things Grand Valley are great because that's where her best friend goes. To. <laughs> thank you, and that's all that I had for my report this evening. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, Mr. Davies. Uh, Mayor and Board, it's that time of year. Uh, we've been uh, meeting our aquatic facility uh, ready for the upcoming pool season. Again, every year we open uh, Memorial Day weekend. So uh, Saturday of Memorial Day weekend will be opening uh, at uh, 12 o'clock. Uh, one thing that, if you all recall, uh, that you all approved was placement of a two-pool pool slide. Um, the only one that we had was the original one that was put in back in 2002. That has since been replaced with the new one, so if you get a chance to drive by, take a look at it. It's, uh, it's a very nice one that we, we use quite a bit. Um, so I just wanted to let everybody know on that. Uh, I believe the, the pool has to be infilled if we were filling it over the weekend and then this morning. So I, now we're starting to get the water chemistry in place and, and hopefully the sun will stay out and have more water a little bit before. Uh, one other thing real quick, uh, another topic that was discussed during the budgetary meetings last year was to have a umpire in charge out the fields during uh, the spring season for both baseball and uh, youth softball. And the premise behind that was to, to have somebody there um, just to kind of watch over the games, make sure everything's running smoothly. If there was any uh, questions or, or concerns that came up during the game, the, umps, the umpires that were out there had somebody to lean on, um, but also address any, any concerns or uh, debates that may come up during the baseball game, fortunately. Uh, we, we have uh, brought on a person uh, to do that, and his name is Eric Chrysler. He's actually been one of our umpires for several years, and he umpires both baseball and softball, so he's cool and both in the rules of both. Uh, he's actually out at Monkey Mountain Park right now uh, in that role, and so 
So uh, we won't have him out there every night that we have games. Usually we have games for Donald Monday through Thursday night. We'll be out there twice uh, a week. Uh, just to try to keep an eye on our, our budget. Uh, baseball and softball. That's what we decided to, to do. So anyway, I just wanted to, to follow up with that. Uh, it would be great to have somebody out there in that role making sure that the umpires show up on time. We have game balls. We have score cards. If an umpire doesn't show, he is certified. He fill in uh, so that the game doesn't get canceled. And then likewise, at the end of the night, he's out there kind of critiquing our umpires. Uh, sit down and with them and discuss things that they did well, things that they didn't work on. Um, so, so, so I just wanted to provide an update on that. Thank you, Shannon. I just have a few things real quick, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first, I just want to tell Kathy, thank you for your service to Green Valley. Thank you for your time here and for putting up with uh, all of our shenanigans. Uh, you've been a good sport. You've taught me a lot um, as a city administrator and even before that. So uh, your, the experience you shared with me is, is invaluable. We're going to miss you very much. Uh, so thank you for your time. Uh, on, uh, uh, sorry, a little distracted there. Started to feel my feels for a second. <laughs> May 27th, we have a scheduled board meeting, Mr. Mayor. That's Memorial Day. It will, uh, since City Hall's canceled or closed, we will be uh, needing to cancel that board meeting. Uh, the question for, for the board is, are we going to reschedule it or do we just skip it? Uh, I can't tell you that I've looked at the agenda outlook. Um, we do not have any uh, pressing items for uh, bills that need to be approved by the Board of Aldermen, uh, but I wanted to just give that to you for discussion uh, for, for a moment to see. Okay. I mean, I think with Jack, I say we just probably <laughs> skip it. I mean, if something comes up that needs attention, I can always call yeah. a special meeting if there's something that comes up that we need to get on, but okay. my opinion is just give it a time and we'll call us plus one if we need to for something. Okay, very good. Uh, two other things, and actually in the vein that, that uh, Joe was just talking about, uh, there over the next, uh, actually tomorrow you'll be receiving information from me. Uh, Joe, I'm going to CC you on that, that correspondence, but it ac actually is from the uh, MML Municipal Watch. Uh, there's uh, several items that, that could be damaging to Green Valley. I, I don't know um, the current status updated this week, but there is legislation uh, from, from the state that, as far as I know, has not been uh, killed, uh, but it would limit a sales tax in uh, any, any city to 14%. Now, that sounds like a lot, uh, but as, as a city, it, it becomes the question of whether a city is allowed to uh, police and set their own policies. Uh, there's nothing that we can do about all of the other taxing jurisdictions within our community that have sales tax issues. So 14%, uh, why that's not an alarming number to us. There are other cities that it would impact and if the state is able to pass a 14% cap, who's not, to, you know, who's to say that it cannot in the future be dropped down to 11% or 10%, and, and at which at which time, you know, that begins to impact your opportunity to offer community improvement districts, uh, you know, th those those sort of things. So, uh, the the second uh, issue that's, that's that you'll be receiving uh, on my report to you is, uh, it's called the uh, fiscal note uh, legislation. And uh, it, from what I understand, it is again another encroachment upon the city's power to, uh, to, to police itself and remain sovereign from the state of Missouri. So uh, please keep your eye out for that and uh, take the time to reach out to, uh, to our elect elected officials and uh, and the committee members that sit uh, on, on these these committees that are reviewing this. Uh, the final thing is that we, uh, as Stephen said earlier, we uh, are looking at re refinancing the Series 2012 bonds. 
uh, just to make sure you guys under, understand the gravity of that. Those are the bonds that were issued to Paul Reno on, uh, that the city backed, um, and so they were general fund uh, allocated allocation uh, bonds, which means that we essentially co-signed on that loan. Uh, that's not a good position to be in with bonding. Um, it's you know it it, it is what we, it is it's, you know it, it helped get the the uh, in, interchange project done. But now that we have a successful development up there, uh, one of the first things that Joe and I did when Star Development approached the city is that we said that there's no more uh, city-backed bonds. Anything that we're going to do related to TIF or incentives will be pay-as-you-go, which means that they get money re uh, uh, essentially based off of their performance. So the sales tax they collect, they're able to, to, to recapture for that portion. Uh, it takes the city completely out of the loop. We no longer have to even be party to those bonds. They issue revenue bonds uh, that are strictly between them and private investors. So that's, uh, that's great news. Uh, but with that, we need to uh, update the Industrial Development Authority uh, the IDA is the over, overseer of uh, any bonds that are issued or refinanced uh, with, within the city. And right now we have um, uh, four uh, uh, folks that are, that are expired. We have the secretary, Penny Cruz, um, which Penny's no longer in Green Valley. Vice President Michael Switzer uh, has, has expired. And then... Um, Kim Rome has expired, and Mr. Coleman, uh, Representative Coleman, has moved on to Jeff City. Uh, if we were to follow a typical protocol, Vice President uh, Switzer would then become president, uh, and we could uh, backfill from there. Uh, I do have a couple names from, from the mayor as to uh, folks to contact regarding this. And I just wanted to bring it up to the board and find out if there were anybody, any names you wanted to throw in of, of folks that would be a good fit on this. Uh, obviously, Michael, I need to visit with you and make sure that you're interested in reappointment. We can have that that conversation outside of here. You can just nod your head. He's nodding his head in there. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Means he's on. <laughs> uh, so, and I'm going to be reaching out to uh, Kim Rome to make sure that he's interested. Paul Wooten was the school. He was with the school district. Um, it's, it's still active as the treasurer. So I have two names for the the openings that we have right now. Uh, we actually need to place. Uh, well, those are the only two that we need to replace, really. So any names that you can think of, let me know. Send me an email and just uh, uh, say, hey, I'd like you to contact this person in consideration for the IDA, and we'll, tr we'll make those appointments uh, at the first meeting in June. Nothing further, Mr. Mayor. All right. Next up, then, would be Port of Auburn reports and comments. Auburn Stratton. Um, I just wanted to tell Kathy congratulations on your retirement, and thank you also for all the years that you served the city. I know I didn't get to work with you personally, but um, I know that that kind of that many years is, is a sacrifice, so I think that's awesome, and congratulations. Um, and then, Joe, I had a question for you. Um, with the conference coming up in June um, down in Columbia, is that any different training than um, what was in Independence and what's in Platt City? Yeah, uh, it is different. Uh, the, the training that's coming up that MML puts on is a little slower paced. It taking the training, so uh, we kind of say throughout the process it's a lot like drinking from the fire hose. Uh, it's a lot slower pace, a little, you know, better opportunity for some questions, um, good opportunities for networking. I highly recommend uh, attendance at the MML conference if, if you can do that as well. Obviously, it's a couple days commitment uh, from that standpoint, and, uh, but I do, I do recommend it. And it is, while the subject matter is similar, it's at a different pace and, and a different coverage. I'm going, so All right. I'm planning on it. Okay. Alderman Totten? Well, I'd like to compliment our public works fellows because they were working, and I mean working, on the ditch down Front Street that was, uh, we had a swimming pool and ice skating rink during the winter time for the water that was running down, and uh, 
terrible thing to say, but I even called them up and told them they was going to charge them for all the dirt they took off our street. And I do appreciate what they did. And I mean, they worked. Uh, I would also like to say thank you to Kathy. Uh, she had to put up with me a time or two, but that's been a while back, so <laughs> right. I don't think she'll re I hope she don't remember that, but uh, no, I, uh, I think other than that, uh, I'm happy. Okay. Alderman Bath? I would just also like to say congratulations to Kathy. Uh, didn't have the opportunity to work with you for a long time, but uh, congratulations and all the best. I'll uh, say the same thing. I enjoyed working with you, Kathy. Um, I'm envious uh, that you're retiring and uh, well deserved. I hope your husband can uh, take time out to travel and do some fun stuff. I'm in West. Just want you to know how much I enjoyed working with you, how much you actually taught me, and wish you the best of luck in your retirement. And if you get bored, you can always come back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Alderman Cleaver. You're just saying, Kathy, congratulations and good luck to you. Thanks for your service. All right. Next up is Mayor's Reports. Now, I hope I wasn't that difficult to work with Kathy, so I hope, like, in your retirement life, you don't, like, break. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe only, like, 20% of what she said. No. <laughs> no. Really? Hey, thanks. I mean, you came on probably not during the best of times with us and really probably spent a lot of time straightening this out, probably thinking what in the world have I got myself into. <laughs> but uh, I think we're in, you know really good place now. I think a lot of that did all the hard work you put in when you came in. So I want to thank you for that and just thank you for straightening all this out that didn't know any better. <laughs> uh, just a couple of other things. Uh, Ken, could you talk about, I know we've had a resident reaching out about, I don't know if it's a drainage issue or a sub pump issue. On Lakeview, I know you and Patrick have went out there and talked with him. I know he's wanting some of the rest of us to come out there. Could you kind of give yeah. us uh, what's up in case anybody else here? Yeah, so he's on uh, Lakeview. And basically, his backyard empties out into um, the lake, the, the subdivision lake. Um, and he had you know, started contacting us. And it's been quite a few months ago. I know Rick was the one of the persons that he talked to. Um, but he thought that his sump pump was running too much and so that it hadn't run in the past like that. Um, so one of the first things we started doing was mapping out all the infrastructure that we had around there and making sure that, you know, there weren't any leaks and there weren't any, wasn't anything, you know, really just visible that was, was off. Um, we didn't find anything with that. Um, and then myself and Patrick went out and met with them uh, at his site or at his home, um, kind of went around and looked at everything. and. To put it simply, he's at the bottom of a hill, a really big hill, um, and we've had a couple of really wet years, um, and it's the spring's no different. Um, and a lot of the water is just going um, to his property, and if some pump does run, um, I don't know if it's quite as much as um, he said. We've actually sat out there and just watched it for 20 and 30 minute. Uh, time periods during the day. Uh, but one of the last things we did just, you know, because he kind of thought, well, maybe there's somewhere else there's city water that's getting in there somehow, and he's just pumping that out. Um, so we have gone and tested the water, and there's no chlorine in it. So it is just groundwater that's coming out. Um, is it so, actually getting in the house? Or no, I mean, he's got a sump pump that's so running. The only thing uh, is the sump pump's running is only yeah. education if there's anything. Yeah, and it's an unusual... So when the house was built, the sump pump was put towards the front of the house, and it actually discharges out into the front yard, but then everything else slopes back to the lake. Um, so you saw that it's something he's looking at trying to do. Is, yeah, it actually like comes out in his driveway. 
Um, and so sometimes he'll, if he's home, he runs a pipe more out to the street. But um, he is looking at one of the things he can do is, you know, move the sump pump where the line comes out and, and goes back down. Um, but, you know, I you know, said he hadn't really had an issue before. Um, but we also went through some kind of dry times there. Um, and you can look. So there's a neighbor right across the street um, that also happened to come out when Patrick and I were there. So we got to visit with him. And he had actually been there the whole time. The house was, um, his was one of the original houses there. Um, and he had had some water issues too, but it was more on like, grading issues that people had done. Um, and he was was actually kind of a, a good reference, I guess, to talk to because he had been there the whole time. But he was kind of able to go over some of the things that um, the resident we were meeting with had concerns over and kind of said, well, yeah, but that's because of this. Like there's a section where the curb has sunk. And at some point in the distant past, we had a contractor that did curb work and didn't backfill accordingly. So the curb itself has sunk a little bit. The resident we met with had thought that that was a sign that basically the, everything was collapsing around them. Um, so it was kind of nice to have those two out there together and, um, and kind of be able to hear somebody other than a city staff person uh, giving explanations for, for what was going on. Now the downside is at the end of the day we didn't find anything that's you know on our end that we could fix. Um, you know it's groundwater that is on this property whether that's from a spring or just the fact that he's at the bottom of a hill. Um, there's nothing on our end that we can really do um, and he's maybe not completely satisfied with um, with that answer, but I mean, as far as infrastructure and anything that we're responsible for, uh, I mean, the best we can see, we've, we've all met about it, had different people go out and look. There's just, we know we're out of answers on our end. I mean, it's water on private property um, that doesn't seem to be coming from anything of ours. So that's where I think some of the displeasure is on his end. But uh, in my opinion, we've, checked everything and gone out and looked at every possible thing that we can. Um, and remind me, did, did you say um, he has any drainage outside? Like, does he have, like, a French drain? Or um, he, yeah, I mean, we can't see it. He says that he does have that in on at least one side. Um, but, you know, like, the, the one spot that he talks about is the wettest is the very back of his yard, but where there's a retaining wall, which is probably eight feet from um, the lake itself. And... Like I said, that, that would be the very bottom point. And kind of when you look up and see, so his yard comes up, there's a street, and then houses and another hill. Um, you know, it's water's coming down. Um, so, yeah, I mean. I'm happy to come and visit with somebody, you know, under conditions like we spoke the other day. Um, I've had water in my yard coming up from the ground when we first moved in, and we put drains in at our cost, and... Um, take care of it. So, I mean, it might just be what needs to be done, but maybe even hear, him hearing one of us saying that we've had a similar issue and we had to take care of it ourselves, maybe that mm -hmm. will help to... Yeah, and so one of, yeah, one, of his, one of his concerns, too, was well, what happens if the power goes out? And that's when we realized that he doesn't have a backup battery on his sump pump. Um, so, obviously, we recommended that he should probably look into getting a backup battery because that would be a... Not a good situation there, which any of you that have some pumps, I would recommend the same thing. I think Been there, done that. When I was talking with you, Mayor, about it the other day, um, he needed somebody to come after five. Mm -hmm. um, and the only reason I couldn't sooner because of some, I mean, I've, my son's graduating, I have family coming to town and some things like that going on. But um, depending on when we can go, I, I mean... I would be fine setting okay. up the time is to... Alderman Cleavers is something that you might want... Is your award you might want to go out there too with? Yeah, yeah. I, I spoke with the gentleman when I was out. Oh, yeah. Okay. He campaigning a little bit. I'm thinking it's just that maybe the same gentleman that hmm. brought that up to myself at that time. So I, you know, I know him from previous years. But, uh, so yeah, I'd be happy to. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll try to get set up soon if you want to head out there with them and they would get it figured out. Can I ask one more question? Huh? Uh, would it be all right if uh, I go over to the Baptist Church to see if they will open their doors when there's tornadoes for people that have no basement? Yes, I thought they had. They talked about that before, I thought. Right, they? Mm, yes. 
What's that going to do? Yeah, I mean, there was, there's been discussion about that before. Mm -hmm. yeah. Actually, yeah, we've talked about this before. Okay. No, I had uh, people asking me, and I said, I've just got a question. Bathroom. I know you told me, and I'll be sure to tell the people that, too. That they come crazy, but I'm not, right, Shannon? That bathroom out there, that's the safest place to be in City of Grand Valley, isn't it? <laughs> Well, That's I five grand still through that bathroom is. Half my, I don't even think we could get seven houses in there. Pretty big bathroom. You been in there? No. No. We have to go two per stall, but. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. A smaller one. Yeah. Now I put one grand. Oh, that that one tornado too? Oh, that one. I didn't know that one was too. Is that F five also? Uh, I believe so. It's huh? a CXD structure. All their structures are. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know the one out Butterfly Trail was also. Do we have signs notifying of that? Like if somebody's like at the park and I, the siren all, sounds or something? Might put one out. I mean, just someone's out there walking and it blows up real fast. That way they know that that's yeah. a shelter. People don't expect that the bathroom's going to be the best place to be. <laughs> all right. Okay, I'm just going to go down this. Okay, Ken already took care of this one. Let's see if they get that one I've already taken care of. You guys take care of all this. Okay, uh, next item I have then is it is that time of year when we get to start figuring, appointing who wants to be liaison to what boards. So if everyone could kind of you know, let me know, or let Teresa know, or Jamie know, or somebody know. I mentioned both. I mentioned just you. I didn't want you to feel left out. I don't. Uh, like what board you're doing, like if you want, you know, parks or fan zoning, and we can do those appointments next time. Also then, since uh, we also need, probably need to do this one tonight because currently with Alderman Bamman no longer on the board, we do not have a mayor pro tem. Not that I expect anything to happen to me between now and June, but you never know, and then the city just be lost because there wouldn't be anybody second in control, right? Yeah, out there. I wouldn't know what to do. I wouldn't get out of bed. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, if anyone has any... Nominations for Murr Pro Tim. Yeah. Uh, throw those four. We're going to do that tonight. Get that one done. I would um, like to appoint Bob Headley if he's interested. Sure. Okay, so I got a motion from Alderman Stratton to for Bob Headley to be Mayor Pro Tim. Do I have a second? Got him everywhere. Any discussion or anybody who just downright does not let Bob to do it for some reason? No. Yeah, if I have to do the meeting, I may need a little help from... Yeah, I'm going to need help for a couple more meetings on that whole thing. <laughs> it, was, it was already getting easier. <laughs> 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 well, it was those first and second read together. We should have eased into it with just the first only. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that would have made it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any discussion? Seeing that, all in favor of appointing Alderman Headley as Mayor Pro Tem, please say aye. 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 All for the same sign. All right. Okay. Uh, next item then is executive session, and I know we have it for probably for a couple of right? Yeah, we have a uh, need to meet for uh, leasing, purchase, sale of real estate, which is Section 2. Section 2. And individually identifiable personal records, which is Section 13. All right, so Section 2 and Section 13. I will entertain a motion then to adjourn into executive session. So moved. Motion Alderman Headley. Do I have a second? Okay. Second Alderman Stratton. Any discussion? All right, sir. Alderman Stratton? Yes. Alderman Cotton? Yes. Alderman Blass? Yes. Alderman Dudley? Yes. Alderman Blass? Yes. Alderman Cleaver? Yes. All right. We'll adjourn the executive session then. Yes.